G, his hero pool, you know, back at TI5 playing TA, Shadow Fiend, like, like Wex Invoker and things like that, he looked amazing. He looked really, really good, but then TA and Shadow Fiend haven't seen much play. You know, we no longer see that Deso rush into Ancients farming. We no longer see the stacking of camps for SF. They tried to give him TA yesterday against EG, but he didn't win or crush that lane like he's used to doing, and it just feels that you know, maybe he slipped a little bit. Hmm. Okay, draft is ready, so let's, uh, let's drop you into the draft right now and see what's uh, occurring in the early parts of the bans. And we've already had uh, one ban on each side, so uh, Bounty and a Beastmaster gone early on. Uh, again, we're, we're seeing this pattern quite often, Blitz, now. It, it's become almost a norm. It's either banned early or it's it's used early. Yeah, if you're going to play against a team that has any sort of Beastmaster players, obviously Universe being one of the more diverse offlaners, don't give it up. And Bounty Hunter, we have talked to death about that hero and what can it yeah. uh, what it can do. Yeah. But I, I am I glad... I've seen a huge amount, actually, so far. Yeah. Because most of you <laughs> it, it wasn't banned the last remaining. series, but that's it was neither no, team neither has team really yeah, normally yeah. play him, so Z Freak Five, plays it, Z but it's not like a go to, it's kind yeah. of a backup plan sometimes. Yeah. I would like nothing more though than for VP to prove us wrong. That's for me, I think it'd make a really interesting storyline if they came back. This was originally the team that beat Secret at, yeah, uh, at TI at TI and knocked yeah. them down. I think the thing to remember is this secret team, like as much as like they played incredibly well against Newbie, as a new team, they've their record is now terrible. They've had won one remaining. series out of four with this new roster. Yep. They beat Team Ehome, who looked Five quite bad at Manila, remaining. and then they lost twice to Empire. Here so far at Epicenter, they've lost their only series. So this is a, a Team time. Secret who's yet to really come yeah. into true form. It's like we talked about. You you have to show more than just your potential. You have to mm -hmm. start to string together some wins, and then... Uh, you know, we're, then we're, we'll start calling you the favorite again. And Secret, they have so much overwhelming potential, that even then, even when they're losing or they're having a downside, you're still going to call them one of the favorites of the tournament. But VP do not have that. Like, they don't have this overwhelming potential. Uh, there's a lot of adjustments that they've had to make with FNG, playing the off lane. We already talked about how hard it is for a support to just move on to that core role. There are very few players that I think have made that smooth transition. Maybe No-Tail is one of the few that has been able to do it successfully. But uh, FNG still... Fantastic player, but something feels a little bit off. Maybe he just needs a little bit more time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think back to to uh, to Ti and some of the interviews that were done with him, and he obviously he's a very young man. He yeah. seems to have a very old head on his shoulders. He seemed quite wise. He was quite thoughtful in the way that he thought about drafts and the way that he thought about synergy with teammates, and uh, and also very actually quite hard about who he wanted in the team and how he wanted to put that lineup together. So it seems like he's a strong leader, but that hasn't necessarily transferred to results. And he was like this VP team was always looked at as like the big CIS team based yeah. on their TI results. Uh, FNG is widely kind of regarded as the strongest you captain of the region. And when pick. the shuffle happened after the Shanghai Major, it was VP who kind of orchestrated all the changes. They were the ones who got to kind of pick and choose which players they got to work with. So that's where this team falling short has been the big disappointment because this is the team that players from all the other teams and kind of ruined a lot of the yeah. other CIS squads yeah. by poaching yeah. the players, one from, one from Empire, another one from Five Vega, for example, well, not remain. Vega, but they, they, they picked and choose who they wanted for their team, sure. and here they are, disappointing. Yeah. Uh, Vengeful Spirit and Chen are our next two. I do like this opener a lot from VP. This feels more like a classic VP draft mm -hmm. uh, from what we used to see them do. I feel like they were trying to branch off and do their own style a little bit too much, but this is a little bit more traditional. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree. When we when we saw them yesterday, you know, they're still picking that Oracle, which was Five successful a few months ago in the CIS region. You know, it was it was looking good, and then it just doesn't do enough in the laning stage. It's very kind of one dimensional. You try and save people, and I, they just felt like they tried to stay away from what everyone else is doing they wanted to try and be that you know sparky new draft like hey look at us we're, we're able to deal with you with our own kind of thing but maybe do you think it's time that they took elements of other people's drafts look at what newbie are doing look at what og are doing and try and fit that into their place I, I think they're in a unique position as we said earlier on in that they they don't have to worry about the major they can blow whatever they want right now they can put out all the things that they may have been practicing thinking about theorizing spitballing they can bring it all out right now put it on the table and not have to worry about what they save so uh, I, I don't know Blitz do you feel you like they should be following the meta and, and following some of the other teams I mean a lot of teams have already started to adjust to newbie for instance and how they've drafted yeah part of the thing is if you're not the kings of the scene you're the ones that are looking up and saying oh why don't we yeah. uh, try to do what they do and add our own flair to it yeah. but do it better yeah exactly but at the same time I think 
it's maybe they might not have the personnel and maybe they've been trying things that haven't really been in their wheelhouse but it's just about finding the right fit i personally i have a lot of hopes for vp it's just that every single time i call them to win so far it's just been you're a curse, Blitz. Yeah, that's what you are. I'm like, oh, this is going to be where VP figures it out. I know individually <laughs> these players are very good. They come from a really great background. Aloha Dance, for me, was the standout support player uh, in a lot of whatever team he was a part of. Yoku, individually, very skilled. FNG, we know all about G. I mean, yeah, I, I take Gareth's point that he has been very disappointing since the I, really. Um, and you, you sort of expected more from him because he was one of the standout players at TI5. Yeah, it really was. So draft-wise, um, not a familiar draft so far. Only the Lion really has been picked an awful lot. We've seen Chen a couple of times over the last three days. Uh, I don't think we've seen a Nature's Prophet yet uh, in any of the lineups. Certainly not picked in uh, so early. And certainly uh, Vengeful Spirit a couple of times, actually, uh, yeah. has been picked up early. Vengeful still a really good hero. They There was at one point when they originally buffed her, she had the double, She had two stuns that she could use uh, mana-wise, so it was incredibly strong, and they slightly nerfed that with her change, but still a strong hero. It's very good at being a positional support on top of me, uh, pairing with something that can kill, Chen obviously being that. Nature's Prophet, on the other hand, was really good the last patch. Probably the hero of Shanghai. And saw a little bit of a drop off because of these minor nerfs, but I still think the hero has a lot of potential. I think all it's going to take for here, like Nature's Prophet, to pick up again is for a few teams to start winning with it, and then every team has playing so much, so much around the Nature's Prophet that once they get some confidence that the hero is working, they're going to keep picking it more and more, and we'll see it elsewhere as well. Paul called it, by the way. He wrote to me and he said, Droban or uh, Dropic? Dro game? Is that Dro game? You have terrible Bang. handwriting. Oh, it's like Doctor's handwriting, right? Yeah. Droban, hey, they were going to go for a classic straight up push. Eternal Envy is yeah. like yep. one of the few players that really likes that hero. I think there's only two teams that consistently run it anymore OG. It's OG and Secret, and yeah. it's because of their personnel. These yeah. two players. Comfortable, yeah. who, who likes it, who, who has great games on it. Sometimes you just believe in a hero when nobody else does. Yeah. I, I know a lot of captains that personally think that Dro is very one dimensional because. The game plan is clear. As soon as you pick Dro, what it, there's no mystery to it. Yeah, you're gonna no, push. exactly. You're gonna you know exactly what they're going to do. Yeah. But sometimes you can believe in that and say, we can Ten overwhelm seconds. you yes. with that style. You can play better than anyone else. Yeah. Uh, so there's going to be a pickup. Okay, so second phase. What are we What are we looking here? Four versus pro? Kind of like Jug in this situation. I think he's yeah. a hero that would deal well with what they have so far, but it's going to be the life stealer. It's not the hero that just fights early on, right? Your your ramp up time isn't that long. You quickly get into like armlet. You can do some cool stuff too, with Chen. You just hop into a creep at level eleven, get aggressive with four creeps on top of that. Very hard. And you mean like hopping to the ancient? Yeah, you just hop into an ancient. Yeah. It's if you look at their lineup right now, secrets. What can they do to clear it? Yeah, the the, the pushing potential around that. Like Chen hits his mech timing. Life still hits his level eleven, and you're. In an ancient, you don't even have to go into any of that gimmicky radiance build. You just have an armor. You pop out of the ancient, do a ton of damage, and blow people up. So, crush towers as well, because what wave clear do uh, secret have learned? Like, yeah. start looking at that as well. Far none. This does open up options though for Team Secret. I think you pick really Ten mobile heroes to combat me. this, and just try to hold with one or two heroes. So you get Enigma. It's going to be your to holding your high ground because I think it's really dangerous playing against this lineup. And usually, when you push against, when you play against push lineups, you don't want to pick too greedy. You just want to be like an inch ahead of them when it comes to the late game, and just so you can barely edge them out. You can also trade as well. Like if you see the five man ball up, you know, twelve minutes in or whatever from VP, you can say, right, five Poppy, push bot minutes. tier one, go push mid tier one with whoever else you've got. Nature's Prophet can join in, maybe after trying to draw some uh, draw some aggro on another lane. Yeah, and they, they can actually trade off decently. I want them. I if I'm secret, I pick something really mobile for RTZ. There's something that can yeah. have some carry slash late game potential, just because if you look at Virtus Pro's draft, it's very in your face. We're going to run at you. There's not a hype, lot of hyper mobility. Neither of their supports, and these are, you at least want one support normally to have pickoff potential. Like if you look at Secrets lineup by taking Lion, that's your pickoff potential here already. And you play around your supports when you're a mid player. So, for example, uh, yesterday, it was very smart of Newbie to take that Disruptor because it completely destroyed that Queen of Pain. You want one support that can counter that mid hero straight up. So for Secret, I think the options here, you have Queen of Pain, Storm, Invoker, any of those really greedy can transition. 
Does Puck or, work at all? Or a Nyx. Oh, that Nyx is smart. Yeah, and they had to, like you were saying, with the two supports on enemy catch, you need to pick up a core hero for FNG or for G in the mid lane that has some catch, because otherwise, like you say, those mobility heroes will just go completely unanswered. Yeah. You could do Ember too on the side of Secret. I know there's that meme, seconds, but... Really? Well, you could give EE Ember. E, uh, more likely Envy would be playing the Ember. Oh, it's going to be DK? Well, they actually, you I mean, this is almost a completely different direction back. we haven't seen yet from Secret. More likely they're going to be the ones setting the tempo, pushing down towers fast. You mentioned the Enigma for high ground defense. Well, the hero also can hit that early mech timing and just push down towers with a DK ultimate, so. As long as their lanes go okay, they come up sooner as well, right? I mean, Enigma level like three or four Eidolons, they get the DK running up. Well, while... I still a Chen do not defend. I mean, we talk about Secret not having wave clear. They, this remain. gives them a little bit, but on the side of VP, there's zero to defend towers with really a wave of terror and try and draw aggro back away from it and that's all you've got team secret i i do like this concept it seems like secret even when they played against newbie they wanted to take the fight to them taking the dragon knight if you think about it uh team vp they also suffer from the same issue they don't have the best way to wave clear and if they lose these early fights then the game just kind of ends for VP's lineup. They don't have the best catch. Even with the Nyx Assassin, it's not as if the Venge or the Chen combo particularly well. Most likely it's going to be the Nyx. Uh, Lifestealer hopping into the Nyx and them setting up kills, but that presents issues in itself. Kind of like to see maybe an Ember pick up last for Team Secret or something yeah. along those lines. Even something like Jug that can fight early on. Yeah, exactly. Fighting early. It's some kind of carry that's going to be fast tempo, pressure the towers as needed and uh, take it to Surge's Pro. I have seen a little bit of Tinker recently, and G played it yesterday. Can you fit a Tinker here in for Virtus Pro? Yeah, so it, it, for, it had to be Ember Jug. I guess they favor Jug just because it's safer. Because the Ember Spirit, I think, has better applications here when it comes to just playing the late game. But Jug provides you with something that continues to scale, but can also fight in the early game. So I, uh, the remaining. prediction was either going to be Ember Jug. I still it, feel it pushes better because yeah. not even just the healing ward, but having that hero that remaining. can be hitting the buildings. And when you see that initiation coming, you Blade Fury to dodge the Venge Sun. Uh, you can dodge the Nyx spells. Last pick, Alchemist from VP. That's their, I guess, their high ground defense. Yeah. So both teams have fairly well balanced lineups that focus more on going for the push. So it's going to be a lot of angling to see who can get the positional mm -hmm. advantages early. And it's an alchemist who can't really be contested too much in lane because you've got the jungler enigma. It's a matchup one v one against a dragonite. Uh, we saw that yesterday in one of the matches where uh, No Tail was on dragonite. Oh, that was a liquid game where they just completely outfarmed the DK. So, mm. okay, very quickly, predictions, Gareth. I think Team Secret. Okay. Mm. I think overall Secret's likely to win this game in probably in pretty quick fashion All with right. their draft. Blitz. I mean, I barely even really need to ask, do I? Uh. So normally I'll tell you who I think will win the draft versus who I think will actually win the game, but yes. I think in both regards, Secret came out on top. Okay, all right. Unanimous decision on the panel. Let's find out if it's a unanimous decision on our caster panel, because Toby won. Back with Purge. Take it away, boys. Well, the odds definitely seem to be stacked against Virtus Pro. All of the panel are just like, it's all secret. The world is basically like, it's all secret. Purge, does VP stand a chance? Virtus Pro. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, I like the secret draft better. I, I think they have good at pushing lanes, basically. Lots of summons, things like that, so they can pressure lanes better. Uh, VP, if they get a ton of gold advantage, you could see them running away with it, hypothetically, but I think Secret's going to be able to minimize those losses, as well as push towers of their own and team fight very well. They've got great cores that match up against what VP has. Like, they've got to kill Alchemist and Lifestealer. Omni Slash is really good against both of those things, and they've got really good disable coming from Enigma, even though Nyx is a decent counter against that. It does look like Secret kind of have all the tricks in the bag. Uh... Let's see how, how it all unfolds, however. VP, you never know. You never know what can happen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold the torch for them at least, because the okay. world seems to be trying to blow out their flame. Well, this isn't the first time you've been the only one on the, the wrong side of the coin. Yeah, yeah. But normally when I'm on that side of the coin, it goes the other way around. So, okay. yeah. Well, so I, either way, it looks like Secret's going to win. It's really going to come down to how well Chen does, I think. Um, and maybe the mid game, how well Nyx Assassin ganks, um, since he can set up a lot of big kills. And then later game, we'll have some ags come out, maybe some super effective Nyx play. Uh, could be very good to slow the push of Secret, but it definitely looks a little iffy here. I, Secret's just so 
so strong in all of their lanes. All of their oh. lanes are going to do fine. They're so BP can get an opening here. RTC trying to go for the rune, surrounded by four players. Support's going to come over the hillside. And what do they do? RTC just sits on top of the rune with a spike over onto God. It will be the DK picking up the rune. And God, he's dropping down low. Open wounds over on RTC. Yoku trying to find that damage. Alchemist actually able to run himself away. So God will end up surviving. Or will he? Universe missing uphill. He can't reach him. God will start the south. The three won't be able to cancel it up in time. So VP already with one kill. You got open wounds up at eight seconds seconds time oh, a little misses. bit too far away but they're going to keep chasing up after oh, universe oh. to try and find the kill while enigma kills J the chen over in the tree line i still want to see if they can kill universe on this top lane oh, there man. goes your attack there's no way for terror they use the open wounds into the stun and this life should be a two for one trade-off yes. going the way of virtus pro early on they did get the first blood over on fng but secret took both bounty runes yeah, that's one way to make it work I, I like what they did as well they cast a demonic conversion on one of the trains so that they actually had value out of enigma there they felt like they could take the fight, but they just didn't quite lock down Alchemist enough. I think it was a mistake to go on him. He's got a poor man's shield. He's one of the tankiest heroes early game. Huge HP as well. They needed to focus somebody else. Well, it still ends up being two for one. The advantage is still the way of secret as far as golden experience go at the end of it. As we also said, the uh, draft is favored in secret's way. Mm -hmm. So it's still up to VP to continue to make these plays. I, I like that Pilot Eye is zoning G a little bit here. It's going to get him off to a worse start. And he also got Grievel's Greed level 1 um, instead of Acid Spray. So he's a little bit weak until he gets 2. So overall, RTZ should be fine here. Pi does come back in. And they're going to keep zoning Alchemist. This is one good way to beat him. Just keep yep. on zoning him. Uh, but he does have that level 2 now. So they, they didn't zone him out perfectly. And you're seeing the support arriving in from the Chen. The Wild Wing Ripper. Actually... It's just running a pilot eye. I thought just one okay. tornado would be more than enough to have an influence in this lane. Why Keep not, it far enough away from us, Mike. Because mm -hmm. normally you get like one tornado out of it. Run up, attack twice, then start the uh, then start the tornado. And this way he can share control G, and G can use it to help him control runes a little bit better, which is kind of a cool way to do this. Because every time he gets a bounty rune, it's hugely beneficial for him. He gets three times the gold. He gets the arcane. No, that's definitely not what he wanted. Life be too hard. Puppy will take the bounty rune up on top river. We've gotten 150 out of that. And he walked the Wildkin all the way over to No Fear, so they're just helping each other out. Just buddy system, you know? Yeah. Also, No Fear is going to come down to the bottom lane, so Eternal Envy, who uh, on the strike and all, it's been doing pretty well. well. 9 for 3 on the CS. Um, actually, FNG hasn't got that much CS out of this lane, he's only sitting at 3 for 0. He's okay with that, though. It's more about levels than it is about the last hits for Nyx. The only concern I have is, like, Pilot Ice led no influence down here, so it's just, like, FNG going one on one with Eternal Envy, and that's the result. Be okay. Uh, Eternal Envy will scale just fine. He can transition to the jungle later with Clone Blade and a Blade Dance level. So I don't think he's super concerned about this. Um, I mean, really, they know they're going to have weak lanes because they have a jungle in Enigma. But at some point, Enigma will come out of the jungle with a lot of levels, and he's going to be able to get kills, and that'll turn into towers, which will make up for whatever Eternal Envy lost in the early game. Mm -hmm. Pilot Eye hovering around the bot lane. Fear as well as FNG are going to back up thanks to the big creep wave that's coming in. But Pilot Eye is getting very close here. There's, there is a little bit of vision on the other side of the tree line. Yeah. There's one observer ward that's watching his movement over. And VP's being a little bit more cautious. It's going to be a little hard for them to kill Nyx, though. I mean, he's with poor mans and five armor and the big regen he's got. Dugget does a lot of damage, but a bit of a hard kill. Unless he just right clicks him eight times in a row. Oh my god, he got two crits there on the Nyx. Now he's at half HP. Um, mid lane? Well, they're not going to have any fun there. Even though Aloha Dance has done as well as Wave of Terror, there's no concoction on the Alchemist. So you got, you actually got like crap tons of negative armor for Virtus Pro. It's doing nothing. And he got two levels of the Dragon Blood. Normally you only get one, so he doesn't have a stun, but he's just eating up all of this harass. But do you even care? Like, RTZ doesn't need to try and find a kill on, like, on an Alchemist. As you said before, like, he's insanely tanky. You just stand there in the lane, you breathe fire, you farm, you stay in close, you're oh, all good. Type armor now. Yeah, Aloha Dance gonna start with a stun. He has to spray us down, Pilot die. Well, he just turns his own stun, in comes Nature's Prophet. Universe coming to help out. FNG will be dropping here. No spike carapace to try and stall it out. As God, this calling Blade's able to get through the sprout. Pretty good for them. Um, nice little kill there. The fact that uh, Puppy consistently rotates to the four minute rune or every two minutes. It just helps out because you're not going to get those kills otherwise and they're going to get the bounty rune. At least you give yourself the chance to deny Alchemist from getting the rune he needs. There's a stun mid uh, just literally for a deny reason. That was a little bit, a little bit weird from RTZ. Maybe he doesn't care when he's got the bottle charges up his sleeve. Gonna make him scared. Maybe you could force a TP out of it or something. <laughs> You just think that Arteezy is going to, going to initiate, but that's going to happen once Arteezy hits level 6. 
then you look for the for the better chances. But rotation needs to come as well. Uh, as you said, like Puppy, he's taking his time to go down to the runes, but this is also a level five Enigma, five minutes in. A little slow, but still fine. He's doing an okay job. And the important thing is the soul ring. He didn't get his jungle camps blocked. He's still farmed fairly efficiently. And the most important thing happening right now for Secret is that Alchemist is the fourth lowest net worth in the game. That is ridiculous. That almost never happens. And it's going to hurt his overall farm very hard. He's almost got soul ring though, which means he can jungle. Well, there's not many stacks that are prepared. Top river, a little bit of trouble right now for a low art dance. Caught inside the tree line. Pylite uh. died. The attack's not going to be enough. The very fire gives just enough life for a low heart dance to back out. And then no fear. Looks at the revenge kill. He's going to take it. But that last little swipe of the hell bear smasher. That was really well done by Venge that he stunned the Nature's Prophet because if he didn't, he would have spawned Treants and those would have body blocked him the whole way. And they get a kill in return because of that. So really well played by Venge. Aloha dance there. He's got boots win lace now. Very hard to catch. Fast movement. Able to get the stuns. Can look good. The Alchemist is still trying to farm up inside the Tahe jungle. The only issue he's got is he's just not <laughs> tanky enough to be here. So the Kree Wave keeps walking outside of the acid Ugh, spray. He's... So this is, this is not an easy thing to do. But at least there's some money coming his way. Yeah, but he has to do this because he got zoned so much. And now Dyer's Eternal Envy rotating mid lane. They're trying their best to shut down this hero. They've done such a good job spending their hero resources. And Puppy's here as well. If this tower just well, goes down right away, then Alchemist just loses everything. Yep. The secret understand what's going on. Like, they scan up, they're expecting him to be there. It's actually the Chen who, uh, who triggered the, the red mark of the scan of Team Secret. This is so well done by Secret, the fact that they rotated. And in the meantime, they're not even losing in the safe lane because Pylai dies there to sap up that experience and the last hits, which will get him a faster six and blink dagger. But this seemed to be expected as well. Like, you're running an Enigma as well as Nature's Prophet with a Dragon Knight. The second Dragon on his level six, he can just bring in the reinforcements and take out towers. Yeah. And VP, like, the panel was also saying it, like, the wave clear is quite poor. The, the one thing they had, though, was Alchemist. Yeah. So by shutting him down, they cover two bases. Alchemist isn't going to be scary, and his ability to counter push isn't going to be nearly as good. So they're definitely in a really tough spot over on VP side. At least the Lifestealer's farmed, but he doesn't even match up that well against Secret's heroes. E -E. I don't know if you can reach him in time. They're going to cut to the tree line. Okay, that's one way to do it. Universe gives the vision for a straight up Omni Slash. Alchemist, he really isn't scary at all. And God can't do anything against Eternal Envy until this stun's going to connect. But it's the open wounds over on Universe, fighting on multiple fronts at the moment. So Universe, he is going to drop, allowing both EE and Antizi to survive. Well, that's something for them, I guess. But even still, Alchemist isn't even close to six yet. He just barely hit five. And he doesn't have the best way to catch up. He'll head back to the jungle. There's some pretty good stacks going. But he's gone for more Grievous Greed than Acid Spray. And I think this build only kind of works if you're six to make up for the regen that you're or the HP that you're gonna lose by having to right click more. So I don't know if this is gonna be super valuable here for him. And they're gonna keep losing more map control while he continues to try and play catch up. TSD Dragon Form comes instantly off cooldown, instantly used. So that T1 tower will drop. They got a healing ward, only level one, but it's enough. They can just keep pushing in. Universe comes to help as well. They don't even have to stop here because that's a fresh dragon form. They got a lot more time to go through tower after tower after tower and VP. There is no reply. There's no way. Nyx is in six. Venge is in six. Their mid hero is in six. There's actually no way that they can take this fight. They don't have enough nuke damage to pull off a kill on one hero. Uh, if, if Yoku could somehow magically find his level 11 and get a black dragon, even then I don't see this They're gonna go This further. is an eight minute rack. Really? They're gonna go up at eight and a half minutes. The Dragonite form has got a quarter of it left now. There's plenty. He got a healing ward up in 11 seconds time. FNG tries to clear with Impale. Aloha has already used its wave of terror. They're teeping back okay. more players and they get a reaction here, Team Secret from Virtus Pro. But that's also Radiant's enough. Top Universe top instantly TPs to top lane. Pylai Dai is still soaking up the mid almost at level 6, so you're almost at the point where Secret can start ganking as well as doing yeah. these un unbridled pushes. It was so perfect that they didn't bring Pylai Dai with for that same reason. All this pressure they put on their opponents forced them to rotate over, and then as soon as the Dragonite ult is about gone, they just back off. They got a glyph out of it as well. <laughs> There's so much value, and now they're immediately going to go to the top lane. They didn't use any cooldowns to take that other than Dragonite ult. And which is almost cool up. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And they still haven't used Omni Slash, so if VP wants to fight, Drug has a really good shot at giving a solo kill on anybody on the enemy team. This this is just unbelievable. I, well, actually, attack. it's very believable. <laughs> we were looking at the draft and saying that this kind of stuff can instantly happen. Teams are just so disciplined at pushing now. Like, you even saw it in the Alliance game. Oh, were... Envy. God, all he wanted was a little bit of farm, a little bit of space to call his own. 
And Eternal Envy just takes it from him. Oh. He wanted to commit to that a little bit harder, but it's just safer for him to be with this team. Because if he gets killed by VP right now, yep. that's the only way that anybody on Secret dies right now. So they so. head detection. There's the the Vendetta FNG running forward to Eternal Envy. Stun, Eter stun will happen. You've still got Omni Slash and Spin, but they get the kill very quickly. Highlight died. Drop the Sentry Ward down, but it's a little bit too late. Not sure if Blade Fury was on cooldown. Uh, I forgot I, it to wasn't. check that. But... It wasn't. So just a slightly late reaction there for Envy. And that's the only way VP gets back in this game. They have to keep getting those kills. And it was a little dangerous because FNG had to stun after the hit. But uh, Envy for once wasn't fast on his reaction times there and does die. So VP's got to keep getting kills. This is the only way that they come back in this game because right now they're easily on the back foot. The kills are helping them. Like the experience getting closer and closer towards Virtus Pro. Universe, TP out, that damage from Yoko. Oh, barely enough. Is that an Alchemist buying it? Tome of Knowledge? That's the first time I've ever seen that one. <laughs> the only way to play catch up. And he's still going for the greed build. Um, well, he's not, like, there is no choice. He hits level 8 with this. Yeah, he, I mean, he has to go armlet. That's clearly the item build he needs from all the physical damage Secret has. But is it going to be enough? That's the question. Toby as the analytical caster, what do you think? No. No? It, it I, might not I, I be took, enough. I took a leaf out of Cap's book for that one. That's, that's, that's the... the type of reaction Cap gave you. Okay, right. just the, the immediate yeah. shutdown. It's no, just I'm like just... what they're in? No. I'm just messing with you. There, does, there doesn't need to be any kind of explanation. Dude, this game is just so heavily, like, heavy on the bush. I'm surprised yeah. the chain can even keep her army alive. Like, no fear is dragging across the map. But now the tier 2 tower is lost on top. RTZ only just freshly triggered this dragon form. You've still got Omni Slash, you've got Finger of Death, you've got Black Hole, you've got Mech, you've got Nature's Prophet, who's just, like, he's actually having fun too because with the Blight Zone, they've even got a little bit of extra assistance to get through these buildings. Yeah, that's great. And Armlet's up on Dragonite as well. They've got almost every single item they need, with the exception of Blink Online. They're set. Yep. Time to go high ground. Yep. Those surprise stuns from FNG this time around. You're going to see him coming. Throws a stun, actually dodges everything. They only hit on two tree and some one small oh, little creep in that tower sound of half-life. The acid spray is making life difficult. It's only a level three acid spray, but with the healing board behind King Secret, they're losing almost no life. Yoku got initiated on, but remember the tower is oh, still ticking this entire time. Eternal Envy, there's your mech charge, plus the extra heal. Envy will jump himself out. That wasn't bad at all from VP there. Yeah. Acid spray plus the wave of terror. Level 3 wave, level 3 acid spray, that's uh, minus 11 armor. It's still 12 minutes in and your tier 3 tower has dropped to 250, 253 yeah. HP. That, that was like, the best thing they did. All yes. these towers are weak. Great damage output. Even if these pushes don't secure kills or don't get a rax, it's fine. As long as nobody dies on secret, they're set. That's why they really needed to kill Envy there. But they just ran out of stuns. There wasn't enough. Um, if Alchemist had a skill point, if he had two more levels, he could have done the follow-up stun. Maybe they kill Envy there. They get advantage while defending, but they didn't get that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully next time for them. Well, we'll see. Yoku's at least getting a hell of a lot bigger. We're going to have an infest maneuver with him too. It's, it really is like... Uh, that's the classic O combination with the infest into the Vendetta Nyx Assassin. Mm -hmm. But he's not Vendetta at the moment. It's still on cooldown, so they smoke maneuver. And then they can go into Vendetta. Eternal Envy is going to show himself on bottom lane. Normally, the big flank. They got a stun from Invis. Oh. It's the only way this works, I think. Yep. If he spins, it's over. They're, he's going to get away. Oh, he goes into Vendetta. Oh, did they see Into him? the tree line. Envy, the smoke's going to break. Envy, there's your wave of terror. And while there's no stun, the damage should be enough to get through him, and it will be. That worked because he put himself in a corner. <laughs> so he does get the spin off. It made it a little bit harder to kill him, but he was already so deep in the trees that a uh, big kill there. Really nicely done by VP to grab that before the next push happens. No fear's in trouble. I, I believe no fear is dead. Paladai comes in with a stunless, the finger of death fly. Buffy with the malice as well. There's no way for no fear to survive. And God, well, he'll move over with a chemical rage up, but nothing's going to come from it. Especially when Arteezy keeping the rest of his team occupied on top of that tier 2 tower. And Aloha, he wants to go for more. If he can get the swap on Arteezy, into the magic missile, maybe Ooh. then they can follow up for open wounds and some from FNG, but the range is just too far. And it was nighttime as well, it's really hard to chase like that. So no extra kill there, uh, they trade one for one. Overall that was alright for VP, grabbing the enemy carry. But Dragonite used his ultimate on an arcane rune, so it's going to be up pretty much the same time that it goes down. And that means more pushing. The last tier 2 tower to drop, 14 minutes into this game. Huge army of trains that cannot be cleared. Well, at least Life Stealer's real farm, and he hasn't died yet. And with the Echo Saber, he's going to be able to deal a lot of damage fast to these high HP heroes on Secret. So they've got a tank up. If they get like a Vlad's or something like that, then 
they almost they become almost impossible to kill because that's a lot of the 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 damage that VP is getting. Lots of minus armor auras and physical damage from Life Stealer, and they go for another infest gank. Yep, they're moving up towards that easy. This time it's not the easier target. This is a Dragon Knight with three points up in Dragon's Blood, and if he gets that armor on, then FNG's not going to find himself they to see. kill. Yeah, that Observer and Sentry, yeah, they're very much aware of this. The Treants are not reacting to it, however, so FNG might feel a little bit more confident. Now, there's no way. As soon as RTZ started running back, that was Secret saying, dude, you're out of position. Like, if they go on you right now, you could, you could die and they could get back into this game. So he backs off safely. In the meantime, Life Stealer not farming, but VP has to take those kind of tries. They have to be aware that those are the only ways they, they win this game. So look for those cores that are out of position. I like what Pilot Eye is doing here, trying to set up for a potential TP. And he's also pushing the lane, which guarantees that they always know where VP are. The lower chance for them to be able to do something unpredictable. If the creeps are hitting their racks, they know VP is up to something. Yep. But even while he's doing this, at least God, like, he's about to hit that top net worth again. I say again, out. for the first time. <laughs> yeah, for the first time. And yeah. once he gets Radiance, it's a little bit better for his team as well. Yeah. This makes Seeker's like, high ground push is just a little bit more difficult. Be perfect, but it's going to be more difficult. I, I would not even be worried in the slightest about Secret though, because they've got so much damage on those towers already, and we're only 15 minutes in the game. So that great start, riding this game out. If that, if it comes to that, it should be possible. And he might die. Caught out with the damage rune. That's a lot of damage wow. very quickly. That Juggernaut is paper, and Envy continues to remain short of having that Battle Fury. Yeah. While the rest of his team is getting more and more items. The Greaves is, is on the Courier for Puppy. Uh, you got a completed Shadow Blade for Arteezy. So now there's Initiation from Team Secret. Because they didn't have that. Pilot is still short of his, his Blink Dagger, but he's getting closer to it. But to this point, Team Secret was still just a five-man walking wall going towards Virtus Pro. Yeah, we can possibly criticize Envy for that a little bit. I don't think he was expecting to die this many times, but VP's constantly found him. And because he went for that Battle Fury build, the first 3k gold that he has doesn't increase his survivability at all. If he bought something tanky, drum, vanguard, anything else, then maybe he went to die these few times and they would have a Rax already. But he didn't think he would die. And once he gets Battle Fury, the game is controlled completely because it would accelerate him so fast. But VP hit this timing window against this item build and it's really helped keep them in the game. Secret are going to miss their opportunity. There is a courier flying out and it does have the relic on it. So that is now finally into the hands of the alchemist. No one's going to catch up to that. And this smoke gank from a secret has failed. TZ couldn't find anyone when he also shadow bladed forward, so they just intercept the creep wave and get ready to push. But looks like Furtus Pro, they group up for their own smoke. Infest again into the Nyx Assassin. They use the tornado to try and hold out the mid lane. The initial gank there from FNG, not going to work. That's the first reveal of his blink dagger. And this time Eternal Envy, thanks to his spin, will survive. He hangs around the wave of terror, trying to dodge it out. The observer and sentry is there. They had vision on FNG's movements. In fact, uh, TZ now onto the cover of Shadow Blades moving forward as well. This is really dangerous for VP here if he catches somebody. But SB is going to end. It's a good item build though because this allows him to move around the map by himself and try to get solo kills similar to how Nyx is doing. So if he finds Venger Chen or something oh, like top that. Top lane, Universe. Open. Jump in from FNG, got the perfect stun. Yoku jumps out and has more than enough damage to finish the job. The question is, can Yoku get out? Uh, like no. he's the only one with a kill streak right now on Virtus Pro and Puppy. You know him. He'll commit Black Hole for this one if he feels he needs to. He doesn't to. have to. He doesn't even have a TP. He's just dead. Uh, you're right, there's no escape. No ult, no TP, Rage was on cooldown. Really straightforward, completely fine that he didn't black hole there. It was a good rotation to kill Universe, but when you gank under a tower like that, you see what happens. They're just going to teleport and chase you down. So, uh, it was a good try. I didn't think they would be there. It got Blink Dagger on Nyx Assassin. That part's great. It's going to make their ganks in the future easier, but losing their most farmed carry, uh, a little iffy. At least Alchemist is now farmed enough to pick up the slack where Lifestealer started. He might get ganked here, yeah. though. He sees it. Oh, Aloha dance. Artiz is waiting for the right time. There goes your initial stun. Universe, while well, the swap goes out. So Aloha dance trapped inside the sprout with no way to come free. The Quellian Blade of Gold was too far away. That mech, as well as Hand of God from No Fear, is committed. A Universe, low on life. Greaves will come in from Puppy, however. But the Wrath of Nature, it'll bounce on through. It's a two for one trade off us now. Nyx Assassin is down. A double kill for Arteezy. What a nice time to also have that double damage room ready to go. Yeah, it worked out pretty well for VP. Great swap and stuff, but um, Universe actually kind of killed himself. A little funny. He ulti because he, he felt safe, but the Nyx Assassin Carapace was up, so he ended up killing himself on that. Otherwise, it would have been a completely clean sweep for Secret in that fight. Really well executed by them, uh, but VP also in position to, to take the fight there.
And now Yoku has to be like, all right, you can take this farm because you actually get way more gold than I do for every creep last Except for no fear. He's like, yeah, I'll take that 42. Thank you. That's just to buy the extra obs. But Alchemist could have hit that creep, gotten 75 and bought an obs plus extra. <laughs> Details of yeah. finance. So the min max, man. At least the it's Battle important. Fury, it's, it's finally done. Almost 20 minutes it took for uh, Eternal Envy to get that after his three deaths to his name. Well, it's also because they spend a lot of time pushing, you know, yep. it's it's the deaths plus that. But the pushing has been absolutely worth it. So it may look like he's farming weekly, but his early rotations were excellent. They set up for potential outkills. Didn't necessarily happen, but it put their team in a great position in the game. Now things are evening off a little bit more, but Secret still has a huge advantage. I'm wondering when Secret want to go up. Like, you're still playing up against Nalchemist, who's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. True. So, do you kind of feel like you're on a clock if you're secret? Do you need to get back up? Like, the tier 3 towers are already pretty low, so it wouldn't be difficult to bring them down. I, I see why you're a bit worried about that, but Secret does have potentially very good gank heroes. You know, SB on Dragon Knight. Juggernaut's always going to be fantastic because of Omni Slash. He can solo kill lots of heroes. And then... With Profit on top of that, once he grabs a, a big teamfight item like Hex or something like that, plus he can be global, I don't think Secret's worried about taking this late against an Alchemist. G is farming very fast and he's catching up, and despite how crap the early lane went, I'm actually surprised he's only dead once this game. I really felt like he was going to be more behind. Yeah. Just really properly zoned and map pressured, which put him behind. Oh, a Blink Dagger, very cool. This is this is a good idea for Alk here, because this lets him teamfight and gank a bit better than another farm item would. He can now combo with his allies and potentially get more of those solo kills. Oh, this trade-off's gonna be kicking in at the moment. VP pushing through the top lane to the tier one town. There's no real defense coming and FNG can't find anybody. He's looking through the Radiant jungle, hoping to find someone, but the rest of Secret is currently in Roshan with a TP. Yep, that was not gonna complete. Eternal Envy was TPing to the tier one tower while the rest of his team was inside of Roshan. It's kind of a good idea as well though. I don't know if he did this on purpose or not, but then it, it makes VP think like, oh, they're about to fight this, we gotta get back. But in the meantime, they're just safely taking Rosh. So. Not quite sure if he was fully intending, but it definitely got VP scared and allowed them to guarantee finish Roche. This looks like it's a push through bottom lane now. So every ulti is up for Team Secret. Radiance top tower. And that's gonna push to the tier three tower into the racks. You have an Aegis Immortal behind you. You put that Radiance over on top of Eternal Envy. So if they want to initiate on the, on the EE, they can do so. Hmm? You'll be quite happy to take the trade off. Killing Arcesian now is very unlikely. Silver Edge on top of what he has. Um, it's quite good versus uh, Lifesteal. You can remove his passive, which means Lifesteal is not going to be good enough against DK in a fight once he uses that. Yeah, well, RTC just starts. As the Kree Wave hasn't even arrived, so they're battling up against Magdal Regeneration. God, let the sun go. RTC continues so to heal anything. up as Yoku starts his attack. Eternal Envy looking to clean up the Chen army with the extra stun. They're able to do so in Wrath of Nature. And FNG spamming everything you've got, but RTC is still <laughs> above half of his life. Yeah. Uh, he's the front line. Tank. He's not even the guy with the Aegis, the Immortal. And that's EE, e. who comes in, hits one, one slice, and almost takes out the entire creep wave. So they can just keep doing this. Yeah. That's itemization by secret. Uh, Universe picks up a medallion, and this offsets the minus armor that Acid Spray does. So instead, Arteezy can just hit high ground consistently and keep hitting buildings. And they can't just go on that, because their damage is decent, but it's a lot of physical. And if they can't burst him down right at the start, then they can't win the team fight because there's always going to be Omni Slash on the background, Lion initiating, and Black Holes. Team Secret are backing out now. They've they've had enough of that bottom lane. There's too much of VP there already. So they start the split push as quickly as possible. Arteezy heads up to the top lane. While the Universe then takes care of the mid. See what Universe picks up. Um, I'd kind of like to see a Solar Crest, but it's going to keep him very personally vulnerable. It would make their push much better, though. Throwing Evasion on top of Dragonite, like you saw how hard it was to kill him. If yep. you throw Evasion and an extra three armor on top of that, he's unkillable. And maybe he grabs Heart next. Just tons and tons of HP and survivability. He will be the focus of his opponent's team. And that's because all of the rest of his allies are going to sit behind him. So you make it full utility profit. And he, you're he right. definitely can, I He's think. He's done it. It's a solo crest for Universe. Yeah, it just synergizes really well. He's still going to be very limited uh, on the ganks because there's a lot of nuke, but it also does give him survivability too. Like a lot of those those ganks were all involving Lifestealer, and now he's going to miss sometimes. Here comes Team Secret. They're running back in again. Fresh items which are over on uh, Team Secret before this fight begins is uh, the gem as well as the, the plate mail, which is up on, over on Puppy. Eternal Envy still holding onto his cash here. The Solar Crest, Pylai Dice still with that Blink Dagger, and Arcane Boots and Arteezy. He's got a casual Hyperstone sitting oh, there, is... and they just run in. The Creep Wave, well, is it really close enough? 
No. Well, they have to use the fortification. Oh, Thank God! Trouble. So close! The Kree Wave was spawned up, soaking up a little bit more of that Omni Slash. But Artiz, you remember what they came here for? They were trying to bring down the Rack, but they're forced into a fight. Concoction Sun holds Artiz in position, but he doesn't even really care. The game gets paused oh. as this attack is going on. That melee Rax is almost down as Arteezy freezes. Oh man, a couple of these happening repeatedly. A little unfortunate there, but I, I think Secret should be able to have this. The Chen Creeps are about to break the healing ward from the main thing keeping Secret alive no matter what, but that Creep Wave spawn absolutely saved them the, the, the fight right there. That would have been Rax guaranteed, because Omni Slash would have killed at least Alchemist or the Venge, either one. But it ate up all the Omni Slashes, and as a result, they're still kind of defending. This melee barracks is almost surely going to fall. Gotta kill Envy twice, or it's easy once. Both hard tasks. <laughs> and you, especially when you look at the support that's still there for Team Secret, the Grieve still hasn't been triggered from Puppy. He's also still walking around with this black hole, something we haven't really yep. had seen any kind of real effect of. And, and you've got swap. and you, yeah, swap as well as magic missile is currently down. Even the son of the Dix assassins down. Pilai die. And you can see him in the tree line. He must be staring down that VS. He, the finger of yeah. death is available. He just blinked up there too with with Pi, so he was setting up for a disable. Um, I really like what Nofir is doing on the left though. He's got a Dark Troll Summoner. It's a great way to counter Black Hole. If you can approach from the side, sends in his melee creeps, breaks the healing ward, set up to try to break, break Black Hole. They still haven't uh, thrown Life Stealer into the mix, and him getting in fast enough is going to be a bit tough as well. So it's going to be tough for Life Stealer GPS. Almost guaranteed they're going to save Black Hole for disabling and shutting that guy down. If you burn Rage with that. And Life Stealer is awful. They're going to be able to kill him afterwards with a DK stun and a mm -hmm. little bit of right click. Damn. Even if Secret do lose a couple of heroes, if you take out that bottom racks, we still have to remember that top tier three tower is insanely weak. So Secret can just come and do all of this all over again. Yeah. Uh, you, you could wait for the next Roshan. Um, and if they don't lose the Aegis, you still got two minutes until that burns out. The current one burns out. So there's still a lot of time for Team Secret to do whatever the hell they that's, want. That's such a good point, because if, if they can not lose anybody here on VP side, then maybe our, our secret will back out, perhaps. Yeah. But like you said, if they have Aegis, they're saying, we're on a time limit, we have to use this Aegis, or we can, safely. Yep. This could turn into a two racks if they don't take a good fight. So it's super important that VP at least burns Aegis here, or gets a kill on secret. But it's, yep. there's such a high chance of it going the opposite way, and them losing all advantage that they have, or evening that they've kind of kept this game towards. See, I'd, I'd be confident the VP can stay alive, especially when No Fear is still walking around with Hand of God. Like, he's burned his mech already, so you've you've got your burst heal, you've still got Infest on Lifesteal, so you shouldn't lose him. The Alchemist is in the middle of Chemical Rage, and Arteezy and Envy don't look really that right, interested to kill him off, so let's give it a crack. The Rikes is the primary target, Pardai gets the Sun on Aloha, keeps him out of play, and now Team Secret, they back out, FNG jumps forward, the there's the Finger of Death, and Eternal Envy keeps the spin going, with a Sun over on God, they're finished with the range, Rax and God, he's trapped inside the Sprout, he can't get back out, this is not the dream right now, Yoku trying to kill off Universe with a fall up from FNG, catching out three. This one they need with a black hole from Puppy easily cancelled. The Dark Troll Summoner, the MVP right now for VP, able to get the kill. MVP back into his spin, but he's gonna drop as well. Remember the Aegis Immortal is still available for him, or is he? No, he's not. Artizi has Ow. an ultra kill. VP are all down for the count. Eternal Envy will survive. They'll have healing ward in seven seconds time. All they gotta do is go top. How, how did they stay alive on Envy? He almost died some. I thought he was dead for sure. At least burn the Aegis, but it never happened. The fight was so good for VP despite the Nyx Assassin getting blown up right away. He buys back, had a great impale stun. Looked like they almost killed all the big fours, but they just couldn't pick off the kills enough. Oh boy. At that point, you even wonder if it was worth it for VP to go out because now Eternal Envy, they're focusing him down. But remember, it's just the Aegis, the Immortal RTZ still got a fresh dragon form here. The trying to back now. out, they're gonna kill him. Swap back over, but Envy, he's focusing on the melee rack. Starts to spin TP, Ooh. they can <laughs> kill him, however. So he will die, but you got what you came for. Team Secret, you burn the Aegis, you burn RTZ's life, but you just took out the entire bottom racks as well as the melee on top. And three buybacks from the three most important heroes on VP. They bought back on Life Stealer, on the Alchemist, and on the Nyx Assassin. And a lot of them died a second time, so huge fight there for Secret. Uh, the two racks advantage is very difficult to come back from in a lot of cases. Especially it, with the lineup like Team Secrets, which is just forcing straight down the lane at you. Yeah, and, and, they and you can't push. clear it. Exactly. Now, they don't have the best split push heroes due to their item builds right now. Like the, the Solar Crest on Nature's Prophet, I wouldn't be too surprised if this is a first. But it synergizes so well with this lineup due to the heroes they have. Yeah.
the universe can still build into something like a maelstrom like you, you can you can start this unless he wants to finish the game and you get something more like a desolator uh um, and start ripping through he could do that or he could go aura items like play the doom the pseudo doom buffing what, your what, allies actually, actually get the vladimir's for his it's, team it's definitely a possibility in some ways that you can also push with it gives armor to your treants it's it's terrible individually you would <laughs> never see it in a pub game ever but it's it has a lot of value here it's going to offset a lot of the minus armor that vp had you saw it when when eternal envy spun he died to like four right clicks because there's just so much minus armor on vp yep so if they can offset that a little bit their only advantage is gone uh, this is just uh we kind of thought we'll be in a position like this the fact that vp held on as long as they did is already like, more than i think a lot of a lot, a lot of people were expecting after the draft yeah, came down to those ganks basically, but even still, the hero picks and the map movement from Secret was exactly what they needed to do to take a huge advantage. Yep. It all came down to delaying Alchemist's Radiance, and they did delay it a lot. And now he's being forced into buybacks and items that he doesn't necessarily want. I'm not a huge fan of the Boots of Travel pickup, because let's be real, he's been in his base a lot this game. <laughs> yes. Maybe would have liked a battle item instead. That 50 movement speed isn't probably worth the 2k. To, to try and there. get someone near, like, like, like a Manta or something, keep Secret yeah. out. Like, even if it just cancels Pilot Eyes, Blink in, Initiation, like, even that would be enough. Yeah, or like a faster AC. That way he would stack with all the minus armor they already have. Something yep. like that could be really good. But I think it looks like Lifestealer is building that. I think I would have liked to see Alk build it, though. Lifestealer can go maybe Moonshard, Alk can get AC. Something like that would be would be better. So I just don't know if Lifestealer is going to be able to even finish it. Lots of fights, lots of pushing, but if he's not winning those fights, he's not going to have time to farm, and he's not going to be able to accelerate into that item that they might need to win mm -hmm. team fights. Yeah, and so far, Yoku hasn't really been coming out on top of those fights. He still has managed to get 6, 2, and 5 as far as the KDA goes. Yeah. He's got like two heroes he can kill. Nature's Prophet and Lion, basically. He got Prophet in the last fight. Um, that was the only hero on Secret that did buy back, I believe. Alright, so here we go again. Verse Pro. The pause will end and the fights get to continue. What are they dropping the term of knowledge for? Uh, Enigma purchased that one. Yeah, but um, he left it behind. It's like they're trying to get either Envy to level 16 or DK to level 16. Judging by the fact that everyone good. walks back out. Yeah, I think DK DK would love to have this, just because then you get basically a free Scotty out of your ultimate. And that'll be a nice slow that you can use to use on Alchemist. Easier to kill him and kite life steal as well, same thing. So definitely very good to get 16 in this game. Most of the time you focus on support, but a lot of justification for the carries this game. Alright, FNG. Back on the hunt, he's trying to make as much space as he, as he possibly can for Virtus Pro. But so far, it's been a bit of a rough run. Yep. Looks like Artesi is also completing up his Assault Curos. Find the plate mail from the uh, secret shop in a moment. Great choice again, counters the minus armor. Um, we might even see him go heavier into armor later, but just nothing really after AC that's going to give him damage as well as armor. Past the AC. But we could see something crazy like that. Shiva's DK. She Actually, no, at, at this point, you should definitely get hard afterwards or another HP item. You could even justify a Scotty on him, honestly. HP, agility, armor, huge mana pool. Something like that would be kind of sweet to see. And I do, actually don't know if the Scotty with the blue dragon stacks, so that's the only thing I'm not sure about. I, I, I just like love how, you, how you're talking about all these items, but I, I'm still questioning if the game can even go that long. Well, it can if Secret decides not to push. That is true. Which they're not going to do. I mean, they, they understand their advantages right now. They're going to get map control. There's a gem on the line. They should be able to destroy all the wards that VP has, which makes their ganks harder. And uh, means that they can move around the map pretty much wherever they want. The one thing I... which would probably be the critical thing for Team Secret. Like, they could chip away and push through this top lane at the moment. Which puts the, puts the range racks in jeopardy. And this means that VP can't just sit around Roshan. Because Roshan could spawn up in a minute and a half's time. True. And and when that happens, like VP with the lanes that push in from both the side lanes too, uh -huh. like it's the maximum length of the map that you have to run to try and keep those lanes pushed out. And that's when the BTs from God can actually help you. Yeah, that's true, because he can be in two places essentially at once. But this is why Secret's basically together. It's it's because VP's losing so bad. Like they know that the only way VP wins this is, is if they take a good fight where Secret's split up. Because then it doesn't matter how much gold you have, not all of your heroes are there. <laughs> so they just have to stay in the general vicinity of each other. Um, and that way, if RTZ finds somebody, he's not going to be walking into a 1v5. It'll be at least a, a 3v5 for a short period of time into the 5v5. I think it's RTZ just found sentry wards in the mid lane, so that could be cleaned out in a bit by Pile I Die. And 
Oh, it might lead him to another observer ward too. Yeah, great, great it's, placement it's the here. only observer ward on the map. It's, per, it's a great spot VP. though. It gives pretty decent vision. I mean, a lot of that is the Eidolon staying over here, but very hard to deward that since it's on a cliff. Okay. Envy's gonna push out mid as they sit behind him. They're they're looking to initiate. Universe is waiting to come in. But you believe his uh, second item is actually a dragon land, so no more support. He's gonna okay. try and play the range game. With an Aegis Prop, that's Kinda actually like that. really good because you can sit at a range of the tier 1 tower, a uh, tier 3 tower, and just attack it. Plus, he's very squishy right now due to his item build, so this way he sets super far back. The stats on it aren't as good because he's an interior, but um, I, I, he may even progress this into a Hurricane Pike for utility as well. Kind of makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, he could push back Lifestealer after Lifestealer goes on somebody, for example, while also getting the utility wow. of force, which is great. If the he gets VP done. really, they, they just rotated four heroes to the top lane to try and deal with the Mandra Illusions of Envy. Then we're attacking into the range Rex. Oh, well, now uh, TC just keeps beating armor. into that tier 3 tower. What, what do you do against that? I, I don't know. Where's he even getting this from? It keeps going up and down. <laughs> <laughs> but there's still a lot. Look at all this minus armor. He still has plus 28. Oh. It's huge. He's moving in and out. Oh, I'll say he's moving in and out of the acid spray, but then this wave of terror that also kicks oh, in. Oh, they're going in. Oh, God starts with a stun. He triggers his own BKB to try and take this fight. Universe caught in the back lines for the sprout. It pushes him out. Then your black hole. God never did right in. No fear wants to be part of the hole as well. God's going to drop. He is just hexed up, brought down. Oh boy, that should be mid racks and that should be game. GG well played. 30 30 on the clock when it's called. Then Virtus Pro will lose game one here against Team Secret. Yeah, it's just their last chance to win a fight. Envy basically, or Artizi sat on the opposite side, did whatever he wanted to. And once the Black Hole came out, that was almost all the BKB of Elk, and they can easily burst him down afterwards with the Sables and right clicks. So, really well played from Secret, man. This draft did everything they wanted to. I feel like they got every single hero. Like, if